whether you're just starting to figure out how to leverage the power of AI or you're well on your way, there are ways to make the tools work for you and your organization. So I hear from our team members regularly about how they've done something cool with AI that either saved them a lot of time or it greatly improved the quality of their work. And it's these small wins that are a big part of how AI is helping us deliver better results more effectively. That's Jenica Jones, DaVinci's lead e-learning specialist and the company's AI ambassador. She and DaVinci president Mason Scuderi share their experiences using AI and offer advice on ways you can use it to improve outcomes for your L&D department. Next on Powered by Learning. Powered by Learning is brought to you by DaVinci Interactive. DaVinci's approach to learning is grounded in 30 years of innovation and expertise. We use proven strategies and leading technology to develop solutions that empower learners to improve quality and boost performance. Learn more at davinci.com. Joining me today is DaVinci President Mason Scuderi and DaVinci Lead eLearning Specialist Jenica Jones. Both Mason and Jenica have led our team through the evaluation and responsible use of AI. Today, we'll talk about DaVinci's journey using AI and how our best practices may impact how you and your organization leverage artificial intelligence. Well, thanks for sharing your insights on Powered by Learning, Mason and Jenica. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, Susan. We're excited to be here. Well, great. Mason, let's start with you. DaVinci invested a lot of time in learning about and testing AI tools to integrate them into the many areas of our teams and our business. Um, talk about what that process looked like. Yes, there are a lot of new AI tools out there, and it can really be daunting at first. Uh, there, there are so many. So as a team, we made sure to invest time in uh, researching and trying out new tools uh, and we've logged our findings uh, in a central location that's accessible to all employees. So it's kind of like an AI tool encyclopedia, mm -hmm. and, it, and it acts as DaVinci's clearinghouse and allows us to document, recommend, and even restrict usage of certain AI tools based on their features and their usage policies. And you also led, uh, Mason, DaVinci's establishment of an AI point of view or POV. Why was that important for the internal team as well as external clients? Well, there are just so many different types of businesses that I can imagine. And I imagine each type has its own use cases, integrations, and workflows. So for DaVinci, it was really essential that we created a, a, a single point of view that represented uh, our perspective and uh, early on captured uh, how we would and, and wouldn't use AI in support of our client work. So for example, it's essential that we always protect client confidential information, uh, but even more so when we're using AI technologies. Essential that we're gonna be transparent and disclose our use of AI to clients as it relates to the work we're doing. Uh, we also require the same from subcontractors and our vendors. Very important to always review AI generated content to make sure it's factually accurate, aligns with our learning goals, and is reviewed for any uh, bias or misinformation that, that might be there. So our point of view lets our clients and partners know how we will and won't use AI and provides that transparency and trust for the work that the DaVinci team is delivering. Yeah, definitely a very helpful thing for our team and our clients to have. Another part of DaVinci's AI journey was the establishment of an AI ambassador to help our team navigate the many AI tools and processes for using them. And Jenica, share a little bit what you do as DaVinci's AI ambassador and how you work with the team to advance the use of AI. Sure, Susan. Um, I lead the team in exploring and integrating the AI tools and processes. So I serve as the primary port of contact for anything AI related, which includes being a liaison between the leadership team and the rest of the team, I also ensure our AI strategies align with the broader company goals. I collaborate with the team members on new projects and consult with clients to identify how AI can improve outcomes. Um, another thing I also do is I organize in our peer share meetings, which is where we come together every month and discuss how we've been using AI recently. Uh, we encourage open sharing of both positive and challenging experiences, as having both successes and failures celebrated encourages exploration. And lastly, my role includes testing and recommending new tools while offering practical tips on how AI can enhance our daily tasks. 
It's such an important role. And I personally love the peer shares because we get to see how we're all using AI tools and in what use cases. And showing the shortcomings is also a good thing to do because you sometimes go into thinking you're going to use a tool for X and maybe it doesn't work well for X, but it does for Y. So it's just great to get the team together. And um, I think too, even if you don't have a use for a certain tool today, you might down the road. So the more you can expose yourself to uh, the different ways these tools can be used, learning through your peers, I think the better off we're going to be. Yeah, definitely. Jenica, share an example of how the AI Ambassador Program has helped the DaVinci team on either an internal or an external project. So probably the better way to do it is rather than a specific project is the AI Ambassador Program has had meaningful impact on our team through a lot of small everyday improvements that add up to significant results. So AI has become a go-to tool for a variety of tasks like crafting emails, conducting research. Um, we have some of them used for writing and updating code. We also use it for creating voiceovers, recordings, summarizing reports, and even writing some of our e-learning scripts. So I hear from our team members regularly about how they've done something cool with AI that either saved them a lot of time or it greatly improved the quality of their work. And it's these small wins that are a big part of how AI is helping us deliver better results more effectively. No, I agree. I mean, sometimes it's just a help to get some thoughts organized into an outline and then take it from there, you know, and um, and I love that we have now a little bit of extra time to be more creative, be more strategic, and of course, add more value to the client work. Yeah, definitely. It helps with that initial writer's block too a lot, a lot of yes. time. Jenica, you just wrote a great article about how to customize chat GPT to get better results. I'll be sure to put a link to that in our show notes, but just give our listeners some high level takeaways about ways that they can make chat GPT work better and harder for them. Yeah, I did. So one of the ways is in ChatGPT, you can give it custom instructions. And it's a way to tell ChatGPT a little bit about yourself and about like what your your tone of voice is, how you like to write. And that way, whenever ChatGPT um, gives you results, it'll customize its results to tailor to your needs and your how you write in your styles. So for example, I like clear and concise um, writing with kind of a natural, more casual tone, um, especially for when I'm writing some of my e-learning projects, um, more informational. So I'll put those instructions in the custom instructions that way. I don't have to keep saying that every time I um, give it a prompt. I don't have to say every time, can you be clear and concise? Can you be clear and concise? It'll just do that automatically for me. Um, was when I first started using ChatGPT, the language was very robust and it was what they refer to as the purple language, very colorful, very uh, exaggerated, and it did not sound like me at all. So that helps to eliminate that kind of purple language and make it sound more natural. That's a great tip because I think too many people get something back from chat GPT that wasn't at all what they thought they would get and they don't know how to tailor it. And that just really uh, emphasizes the importance of the human connection to AI. I mean, I think too many people still are concerned about uh, you know, machines taking over, but really it's only as good as what you put in as a human being. Correct. Yeah. I, I say it gives a really good first draft and you really have to read through it and customize it and make it personalized to you, you know, just keep refining it and you can use ChatGPT to help you refine it, or you can just take it and edit yourself um, on your own time. Yeah. Sometimes I'll even write something and I'll then I'll put it in chat GPT and say, you know, give me an alternate version of this. Mm -hmm. And I, I may not use it, but I might pick out a sentence or two that I think, oh, that's a better way of saying it. So it is a great partner, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yep, it is. It's a, a great partner. The, it's like an intern, a really great intern that you have to help you rewrite things or to re do research for you too. It does whatever you want, just doesn't get any coffee for yes. you, right? <laughs> right. Yes. And you have to give it very clear instructions too. Yes. Because you can't let an intern go rogue. You have to be very clear and concise <laughs> with them with them too. That's good advice. Well, Mason, you've spent a lot of time vetting AI tools and have a list together on a blog post uh, on DaVinci.com. Share about some of those tools and how they have the potential to help L&D teams that are listening. Sure, Susan. Uh, recently, we've uh, upgraded our version of ChatGPT uh, to the tier of ChatGPT for Teams. And that has given us the ability to create uh, some customized versions of ChatGPT uh, for different use cases uh, internally. 
And uh, it also gives us enhanced privacy and data protection and allows us to know that our inputs are not used or not shared to trade, train the, the larger language model. Uh, so we're, we, we've really enjoyed collaborating in ChatGPT for Teams uh, as a company. Outside of that, uh, using Grammarly, which is a great uh, writing assistant tool uh, that's driven by AI and helps us create some draft copy that can then be used and build upon uh, to create e-learning content uh, for uh, voice and avatars. Uh, we've had some experience with Well Said Voice AI, and that allows us to create a customized voice and also a custom text-to-speech voice avatars, uh, which, which is pretty exciting. And then another idea starter is a solution called Magic Slides, which can generate a presentation just from a text outline. And that's really exciting, uh, an exciting way to kickstart some ideas, a, a visual presentation uh, with an automatic slide generator. So those are just a few. In, in general, the tools are really helping uh, the instructional design and e-learning design areas of the company uh, think smarter, faster, and uh, be more effective. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. And of course, this list continues to change. It's probably changed since we started recording this podcast because there are more tools all the time. With the help of the DaVinci team, how will you continue to update it as new and better tools become available? Yeah, it's something that we're, we're always looking at. And we're again, we're using that internal uh, resource, our clearinghouse to monitor, uh, to include notes on how uh, the use of AI tools is going across different areas of the organization. So we will continue to to invest the time to monitor and watch to really see which ones are working well and uh, which ones maybe we, we want to, to move away from and find other solutions. And we'll put a link to the list that you created um, on our uh, website in the show notes so people can check that out. Jenica, what do you think are some of the most impactful ways L&D teams can leverage the power of AI? You use it every day. Right. Yeah. One of the most impactful ways that I use it is in the writing process. Uh, tools like ChatGPT and Perplexity can provide a solid drop first draft for almost any kind of content. So you, really, you just give it the, your core ideas, what you're thinking, what you want it the, the end result to be, and give it a tone of voice, and it will produce a draft that you can refine and personalize. Whether you want to, you know, sometimes I like to add a little humor to my emails when I send it out, or if I'm, I'm writing, or I want to add a reference to a classic film, or just, I just want a couple options. It can give me that and handle it with ease. Um, another way is brainstorming. Um, brainstorming is great use for AI. I love using it to generate ideas quickly, and you can present it with a problem or an idea, and in seconds, it'll come back with 10 more creative options. It's like having a perfect brainstorming partner who's always ready to go. Yeah, definitely a tool to lean on for sure. Mason, do you have any advice for our listeners on how to get started on their AI journey or how to evolve if they are already using AI tools but don't know where to go next? Sure. Well, now is the time to begin. Uh, so tools are, are being introduced every day and uh, the tools that are gaining momentum, uh, you know, more investment is being put in them to make them uh, better and, and more proficient. So things are expanding at an exponential level uh, and we're going to see more and more uh, solutions come forward. So I think the important part is don't let, um, if you're feeling behind, don't let that stop you from, from diving in now. The important part is, is to start uh, today and, and to dive in. Some of the things that we've learned uh, along our journey is just to be aware of, um, especially on the job in the professional setting, is be aware of safeguarding personal and proprietary information. Uh, there's a lot of different tools and they all have different usage policies. So we want to be extra cautious about our inputs uh, into AI and, and just be aware of proprietary information. Also, um, just that transparency. Uh, make sure that you have consent, you know, from, from your supervisor, from your company, uh, from your clients. And, you know, make sure to communicate clearly uh, how you're using AI so it doesn't become a surprise uh, after the fact. I encourage everyone to... Be sure to review AI outputs with heavy scrutiny. Again, the, the, the machines are getting better, but there are have been well-documented cases of bias and uh, even racism and unintended, but coming out of uh, AI prompts. So we want to be careful there. 
Uh, and then uh, I think one of the biggest things we've learned is just important to catalog your journey. So as a company, we're documenting uh, every step that we take with AI. And I think that could translate to an individual where uh, you just want to take really good notes on uh, the, the things that you're using, document, catalog, what's working well, and uh, use, use those notes to reference as the next generation of tools uh, g gets released. Uh, it, it will be a helpful uh, part of your journey. Such great advice. And I think uh, especially the part about, you know, checking the output that you're getting from AI, you know, whether it's uh, something that is not correct or, you know, they call it the hallucinations of AI. So you, you definitely need to check before you uh, adopt that work as your own because it's your name and your company's name behind it. Absolutely. Well, thank you both for sharing Da Vinci's journey with AI. It's so exciting to see how far we've come as a company using AI. And I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to more peer shares and more learning from each other uh, so that we can explore how to use AI tools even more in the future. Sounds great, Susan. All right. Thank you. Well, if you have an idea for a topic or guest, please reach out to us at poweredbylearning at davinci.com. And don't forget, you can listen to Powered by Learning by asking your favorite AI tools, Siri and Alexa, to play the latest episode.